So I'm leaving Hong Kong right now, and I gotta be honest, I feel uh, a sense of loss, a sense of disappointment. And I was thinking about why that is. I could just feel it in my heart. And I realized what it was. It's, it's when you're leaving a former colony, there is a sense of loss. Because there's such a feeling of privilege as a Westerner, as a Canadian, speaking fluent English. It's that privilege that you get from going to former colonies. They really treat Westerners with so much respect. And I would say admiration, envy maybe, admiration. And you just don't get that feeling in normal places of the world that weren't colonies, you know? So in China, a lot of places were colonized, like Qingdao to Germany, Shanghai to France, Hong Kong to Hong Kong to Britain, of course, Macau to Portugal, and other cities as well. There are lots of colonies in China that you don't know about, the mainstream media doesn't talk about. But when you're in the other parts of China, like Guangzhou, most of Guangzhou was not colonized, you don't get that. You don't get that anywhere else in China, this feeling that you're special just for being a Westerner, right? But you totally get that feeling in Hong Kong. So being here for two days, I was just oh, soaking it in, just loving that privilege. I mean, everyone likes privilege. So when I get that privilege, I honestly understand how white people feel pretty much everywhere in the world almost. Um, so only rarely do I get to feel that as an Asian Canadian. In Hong Kong, I feel it. Uh, when you're from the, a Western country speaking fluent English, immediately it's all, I think it, it just harkens back to when they were colonized, this mentality that foreigners are above you. Um, you know, the foreigners above you, the Westerner is above you, so you have to sort of like bow your head to them and show respect to them kind of thing. Um, so people that have never been colonized before, they don't have that in their mind. They have no reason to show undeserved respect to foreigners, you know what I mean? Even though China has been conquered uh, quite a few times, at least five times in its history, um, it's not, it, I guess because they also ruled themselves for a long time, it's not a permanent thing in their mind. Hong Kong was, was, was ruled for the last 150 years from Britain, uh, so it's still very much in their uh, psyche, you know what I mean? It's only 9 p.m. right now, and it's already pretty busy. I'm guessing by 11, the streets are gonna be full. Our streets here are alive as ever. Hong Kong's good. Hong Kong's real good. Maybe after they all get drunk, they'll protest. I don't know, but right now everything seems legit. Totally normal as usual. You walk. Finally at the Mong Kok, I remember lots of people. Tons of people. So many. Yeah. Yep. So just walk in around Mong Kok right now. I'm trying to buy a voice recorder because for the first time in my life I'm going to do voice interviews because no one wants to be on camera so I'm heading to a store called Broadway. They sell that stuff. Um, wow, beautiful sunny day here. Here it is. That's Mong Kok. Mong Kok's an awesome area.
putting my face in just to prove I'm here right now in Hong Kong. So like I said, if I was speaking Mandarin most of the time uh, in Hong Kong, I'm sure I wouldn't get the same respect. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure I'd be treated like shit um, if I used Mandarin instead of English. They would just think I'm a mainlander. So it's funny, like just doesn't matter how I look, just using the proper language would trigger some kind of uh, effect in a, Hong a lot of Hong Kong people's thinking. You're a Westerner, you're super awesome, we admire you, we look up to you. And then if you're a mainlander, the opposite. We look down on you, you're crappy, uh, you're dirty, So, and they would, they would think there's something wrong with me as a mainlander. Um, I should do that next time. I'm gonna go to next time. I'm gonna go to Hong Kong. I'm gonna sp use Mandarin every time, and I'm sure I'm gonna be treated like garbage, uh, just like the story I told you about the receptionist, the hotel receptionist. But um, again, I want to talk about the co confirmation bias here. So basically, Hong Kong people they're using the the logical fallacy of confirmation bias. So when they see uh, a mainlander do something wrong, rude. Then they always say, oh, look at that, see? That's a mainlander, you know, being the way we think they're being. But then when most mainlanders that are really nice and educated, when they are really nice and act politely, then a Hong Kong person doesn't deem them as, uh, you know, as a mainlander. Oh, yeah, maybe they're local. That's a local. Or maybe they're uh, like me, like a uh, Huayi, like uh, overseas Chinese, right? So... That's the confirmation bias. When you only confirm your your belief with evidence and ignoring all the other uh, ignoring all the evidence against your belief. Does that make sense? So you only confirm your belief with examples that you see, and all the other examples you just ignore it. So that's the confirmation bias. Only believing on the confirming evidence, never accepting the negating evidence. Okay, so that's what's going on with the Hong Kong people. So they're led to believe that their brothers and sisters across this f small little border that separates the island and the mainland, they're led to believe that, that there's a huge difference between these two people. And I can tell you, yeah, there are differences, but that's a historical reason, you know? I mean, the Chinese mainlanders, they've been through a lot. The Cultural Revolution, the Civil Wars, it has not been an easy 70 years, but they've made it. You know, they deserve the success they have right now. Hong Kong people have no idea. They did not go through these like spiritually challenging times.